Okay, well, we'll go ahead and kick this off today to get started, get everyone on their Friday afternoon. Um, but welcome everybody to the second part of our Friday feature series. Um, students that have just joined in, um, I see some familiar faces from last week, so thank you so much for coming back for part two. Um, and for those that are new to our series, welcome, welcome. Um, before we get started or as we chat today, if um, for students that haven't answered the questions on the main screen, if you can just send over a quick chat to me privately, I would love to hear more about um, how you heard about this series, but but most importantly, what are you currently exploring or searching for, whether it be internships, uh, the full-time job search, if you're considering graduate school, um, anything in between. And so that is really helpful for me to be able to follow up with you after the series um, individually so that we can continue this conversation. Um, so again, welcome. So today's topic is going to be practice your handshake virtually um, and applying with confidence. And so we have a lovely special guest and I'm gonna let him introduce himself in a few short minutes um, to be able to talk today and speak to uh, successful strategies in relation to not just the internship search and full-time job search, but also if you're considering graduate school, what that process could potentially look like um, and even more so in today's climate how are we still keeping up with our application material how are we still actively engaging in the industry and in the associated employer communities um, and really anything in between for those of you who I haven't met before um, my name is Marissa Miller and I serve as one of the career counselors within the Office of Career Development and Corporate Relations um, here within the Samuel Ginn College of Engineering um, it is so great to see you all um, your names at least, I can't see any of your videos and that's okay, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, but I'm gonna go over a couple things, kind of house items before we get started. Um, we are recording today's session and so the questions and the responses will all be saved and I will follow up with each of you after today's session for that recording. Um, but also as we get going today, um, a couple things that I would love to encourage you to do. Um, so if you have questions that I've already gotten a few, which I'm really excited about. Um, students, if you have questions that you would like to ask Joseph and he's gonna introduce himself soon, um, if you just wanna privately chat me and I'll be able to moderate those questions during our session together today. Um, mentioned already the recording um, i will get this out to you as well and if you have any issues or in relation to zoom i'm going to pretend to be a zoom expert for the next 45 minutes or so just chat me individually and we can make sure to get you back on par um, but without further ado, I want to hand this over to Joseph Moore. So Joseph, thank you so much for being here today. Um, if you could kick us off today, just to introduce yourself, um, to include your Auburn journey, journey to Auburn University um, and beyond. And thank you for being here. All right, cool. Thank you, Marissa. I appreciate you all having me. And thanks to everybody on the phone uh, you know, for taking a moment out of your day to, to listen into the conversation. And Marissa, as we're going with the questions coming in, if you find one that's relevant to what we're talking about at that moment, please feel free to chime in you know, at any time. So I definitely don't wanna give a dissertation for, for all this time. So <laughs> uh, as, as was stated, um, 2008 grad in aerospace engineering, and I'm a process improvement leader for GE Aviation. So my, my day job lies in our, our manufacturing branch, our global supply chain. And in particular for me, it's an additive manufacturing. So, I lead all of the improvement activities in our global additive manufacturing base, base, which is shops here in the US and in Italy. And then also, also have responsibilities over uh, engineering groups that are in the US, Poland, Czech Republic, uh, Germany, oh geez, uh, and a few other places, Turkey, I believe. So kind of a global team. So pretty cool job for, for me um, to, to be in. I've been in it for about a year. Um, prior to this, I was actually in Auburn, so I was there for three years um, at the Auburn facility that GE Aviation has there, and I was brought down there to work in Additive to launch 3D printing there at the site. So we built the world's first high-volume 3D printing facility there in Auburn, Alabama, where we were manufacturing the fuel nozzle for, uh, for the LEAP engine, which goes on the 737 uh, MAX and the Airbus uh, 8320. Um, prior to that, I was in Seattle worked as a field service engineer working at Boeing. Um, so I was doing integration of engines into the airplanes, mostly on the 747-800, which was a cool job because the 747s, if you know, one of them's Air Force One, um, but a lot of other heads of state and, and 
you know, very wealthy folks around the world would actually buy these planes. So not only did I deliver to airlines, but I also delivered to folks like the Sultan of Oman and to the Saudi Arabian government. So it was very interesting to see the dynamic of, of the customers. And it was also a cool job for me because I was outside basically every day around airplanes, which, you know, for an engineer actually being able to get out and get your hands dirty with the product, I think is something that's better than anything you can do. Um, and before that, I was on one of G's leadership development programs, operations management leadership program, where I did four rotations in two years. So every six months, I was moving to different jobs. So I started in North Carolina and then moved to Kansas and then moved to New Jersey and then moved out to Seattle, where I settled for a, for a little while. Um, educational journey wise. So what brought me to, to Auburn, I'd say, was in the sixth grade, I had a friend of mine who said that his uh, uncle worked for Delta Airlines and he was an aeronautical engineer. And like, that was the day where I was like, Ooh, I want to be an aeronautical engineer. So um, it started long before that with kind of my interest in rockets and airplanes, but I had no idea what to do with that interest. Didn't know, you know, what types of jobs that you needed or what types of education that you needed. I just knew I really enjoyed airplanes and rockets. So I thought, you know, maybe I'll be a pilot. Um, and then once I figured out what aeronautical engineers do, it's like, okay, that's my path. And I thought, okay, maybe with that, I want to be an astronaut. Because uh, another Auburn grad, Jim Voss, who was uh, one of the NASA's astronauts, you know, also lived in Opelika, where I grew up and went to school. So um, having that kind of vision, that's kind of the path that I thought that I would be on, you know, very much interested in the, in, in the space side of things and learning a little bit more about rockets. So I came to Auburn in 2003 after I graduated from, from high school, still stayed at home my entire time while I was in, in college and, and uh, you know, started my, my young education as an engineer. And about two years in, I got my first internship, which was with the Army. So one of the things we want to talk about is, you know, applications and jobs. I got a ton of do's and don'ts that I could share with you all about, you know, good things to do in interviews, bad things to do in interviews. I can remember one where I went to the interview not knowing enough about what the company did, and they were a, a global company with a lot of different manufacturing norms, and I thought I was interviewing for the wrong job. And, and so that interview lasted like a minute. So we talked for a minute, and then... The interviewer talked for about 27 minutes, and needless to say, I didn't get that job. Um, but on that same day, I did an interview with the U.S. Army, and so I ended up getting a co-op with the U.S. Army in Huntsville, worth working at the uh, Aviation Missile Research Development and Engineering Center there, the MRDEC as they call it, and I was working uh, in the function that worked on your smaller tactical missiles. So we would do missile system simulations. We would look at designing new hardware. We'd look at what we needed to do to maintain existing hardware. So it was great to get work experience during that time because of the military ramping up. And it was also kind of good to have a job to understand what you know, real engineers did. Um, but that also let me know that that particular job wasn't one that I, that I wanted. So one of the things that you all will, will learn and what I often see from students sometimes is when we're, when we're recruiting or you know, when they're signing up for an internship, sometimes you think, hey, you know, this is the rest of my life. If I take this job, I'm going to be with this company forever. And that's, you know, definitely not the case. The, you know, the goal of the internship or, or the co-op a lot of times is just like the company is sort of interviewing you to see if you're going to be a good fit for, for that company and for the culture. You should be doing the same thing to that company. You should be seeing if you like the work environment. You should be seeing if you enjoy the people that you're working with in that particular group. You should be trying to understand if, there's a career path for you there that aligns with the type of career path that you want. You should be looking to see if, um, if you're, you know, there's opportunities for development or the culture fit. So if you're someone that's very socially conscious, you know, the company that you go work for, you should be looking to see, you know, whether it's big company, small company, it doesn't matter. You should be looking and doing your research to understand, hey, does this company align with my values? Do they give me volunteering hours so that I can go do some of the things that I like to do outside of work? So, you know, take advantage of that time to, interview the company and to evaluate the company just like they're evaluating you uh, because rest assured we know that you have a lot of options and we know that you're very valuable talent so we're trying to do our job to kind of recruit and bring you in so there is a give and take there that that goes both ways and so you do have a little bit that you can a little bit of leverage that you can apply as, as a student to ensure that you're getting what you need from the company because if we hire you in, if we spend all that time, we want to keep you around. So we're going to try to do the things that we need to do to, to make that a worthwhile experience. And it's the same for a lot of companies. And so my job with the Army, while the work was great, um, one of the things that I had to do was it, was it was classified work. So I spent most of my days inside of a building that had hardly no windows. And then inside of that building, I was inside of this classified room, which was basically a giant safe. So you'd have to go lock yourself in and lock the door behind you. So there were obviously no windows in the middle of the building. 
Uh, there were a bunch of computers in there, so it was really, really cold um, because of all the fans that were used to cool the computers down. So it wasn't really an environment that was for me. So, you know, that evaluation of the company there, I kind of realized, hey, maybe this isn't the opportunity that, um, you know, that's going to be right for me. So it's like, what do I do next? And so around that time, you know, we're getting into 2008 time frame, And so you, you've probably heard the word crisis thrown around quite a bit these days. Well, that before this current crisis was the major crisis that really had everyone kind of wondering what was going on when, when the financial markets crashed. And so I graduated into, into that environment. So the best path for me ended up being to go to graduate school. And I told you earlier that I still kind of had those, those, you know, those outside visions of, hey, aerospace engineer, maybe I want to be an astronaut. Um, so it was kind of the perfect time for me to want to go and continue my education. And so I went to Purdue University in Indiana to, to get a master's degree in aerospace engineering, worked on uh, solid rocket fuel. So I was working with the space shuttle's uh, rocket propellant while I was there at the school, um, working on developing new ways for us to, to be more efficient with, with the burn process there and ended up getting a master's degree and writing my thesis. Um, but along the way, I got connected with, with GE Aviation. And so I didn't think at the time that, you know, I wanted that path. Like I said, I thought I was on this astronaut path. Maybe I'll go work at a government lab. But I ran into a company that shared a lot of the values that, that you know, that I hold dear. Number one, you know, they were in the industry that I enjoy, the aviation industry. They made very large machines, which was great for me. Um, I got one internship with the company and realized, you know, how they were active in the community. And we do a lot with our interns and our co-ops with having them, um, you know, go out and do volunteering. I can remember my first internship. We went out for a day and painted houses in, in downtown Cincinnati, which was where I was for the summer. So a group of us interns got together, went out on a Saturday and, 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 and helped with, with a family that needed to have their house painted. So it was kind of those sorts of experiences that let me know, okay, you know, this company does some of the work that I like. Um, it's aligned well with, with the major that I have. Um, and also, you know, their, their mission outside of the work agrees with, you know, what it was that I, I wanted at the time. So it was a good fit for me, but I was able to ride out the two years of, of, of the, you know, the financial crisis while, while being in graduate school. And when about the time where I came out um, was when things in the economy were starting to rebound a little bit more. Um, and that's when I got on that leadership development program. And kind of from there, it's, it's been, you know, pretty awesome journey where I've had a chance to live all over the country and, you know, work with a lot of, a lot of global teams. And that's actually one of the things I think that's prepared me a little bit more for moments like today. So, you know, instead of me being in the office, I'm sitting in what usually is my dining room, um, you know, and it's kind of been my space for the past three weeks. It's how I work. So when, when I found out about two and a half weeks ago that we were going to be home, I went down into the basement. I still had the computer that I had during graduate school. Haven't used it in years, but the computer monitor was still there. So pulled the monitor out, brought it up to the, to the dining room and set it up on the dining room table. Made sure that I had a, a seat in the house that's near a window. So the little red curtain that you see behind me is part of the window because I told you earlier how much I at least want to be outside or enjoy being able to look out the window. So my spot is here, very, very close to the window where I can stare out the door and watch the squirrels run around in the backyard and see the occasional rabbit. And when the dog goes outside, I can watch him as well. So um, still, even with my work from home situation, I'm trying to make it um, as, as normal a, as I can because, you know, it, it's one of those things that's affecting every single one of us. Um, but the experience that I got working with global teams in my current job and in some of my past jobs has helped because I've had a chance to you know, participate in some conference calling, had a chance to work with teams that are not based in the U.S. So you kind of get an understanding. And I think for you all as current students, one of the advantages that you have is some of this technology you're already used to, right? If you're already used to FaceTiming people, Consider that to be just like a teleconference. It might be more informal, but that's basically what it is. Most of you are in certain group chatting apps, which is, you know, just like the way that we're all, the rest of the world is having to catch up to how you work. How do you work virtually? How do you make sure that you get your message across through text as opposed to through voice? You know, how do you use a video conference to connect with someone that you can no longer go and see in person? So that's one advantage that you all are going to have during this time and even as you enter the workforce because you've already got some exposure to to the technology and you've been able to actually use the technology as opposed to you know maybe some of us that are a little bit older who maybe weren't you know haven't embraced it as much or maybe are only using it because we have to as opposed to because we want to so you know that's a tool that that you can use um to to your advantage during this time 
any questions while I'm as, as a transition from career talk to something else or anything relevant to that point right now? Yes, a um, couple actually. So it's like you knew. It's like you knew what questions were coming in. Um, the first question is directly relatable to what you just mentioned in relation to transitioning to be remote um, and utilizing technology. So kind of part of today for students to recognize is there's no better time to get connected virtually. So whether that be through LinkedIn, um, how to utilize Handshake effectively or other job search platforms. So um, to the question when the students asked is, in your personal um, experience, and although Handshake was not a platform when you were here for undergrad, um, but you probably use it most as a recruiter and also as a hiring manager, can you speak to, um, Handshake as a platform and how you currently utilize it in your day to day. Um, and then the, the more so the question was also you as an applicant or as a previous applicant, what type of search platforms were did, would you recommend. Right. So I think Handshake is great. Number one, because, um, you know, a lot sometimes a lot of corporate systems, you know, you don't really understand what's going on there. You don't know who's behind the wall, whether or not, you know, it's a robot that's doing the screening of your, your resume or, you know, something else. The, the great thing about, about using Handshake for me as a recruiter, like when we come for co-op interview day, is you know, I'm looking at every single one of those resumes. I'm looking at every single one of those profiles that the students are, are putting up there. So I think the Handshake element for us has added a little bit more of a personal touch, and it's, it's a little bit... Um, I'd say less ambiguous than what you'd get going directly to a company's website sometimes because it's not a big abyss. You know, uh, we, we know exactly what we're looking for when, when I come to Handshake at Auburn University. I know I'm looking for college students with these particular majors, with this particular GPA that are interested in working in this type of field. So it helps with the aligning of, of the interests. Um, Handshake makes that very, very, very easy. Um, and, and, and so for me, kind of how I use it is just that. I use it to kind of do a lot of the pre-screening to make sure from a from a, a grades and major and interest standpoint that the the students on on the website um, that you all align with what it is that we're looking for so it allows us to do that that first screening really really quickly and, and one of the things that that we know is 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 we're told that it, it takes about three touch points or three interactions for us to to make a positive connection with a student and so handshake becomes one of those areas where we can make the connection sometimes it might be that um, we saw you at a career fair where we're seeing, you know, lots and lots of people come through. So you get a face-to-face -face connection. Then, you know, a name that I remembered, I might see it on Handshake and go, oh yeah, I can remember that meeting of, of that person. And so, you know, that, that allows us to do our scheduling. So I think Handshake becomes just like any of the other tools that you have is it allows you to have another touch point with, with a company. And in particular for you all as college students, it, it, it's great because on the university's platform, you're looking at it in terms of how um, how these companies are directly targeting me as as a college student. You know exactly what you get, what you're getting there versus if you if you were to go out to um, you know to to the ether or to the abyss of the internet and just do a general search. So I think I, I like it because it's targeted and it's great for you all because it, it's targeted to the fact that hey, this is this is here for the students at Auburn University, and I know exactly what the companies are looking for. That's fantastic. If you don't mind, I'm gonna share over to Handshake real quickly just to show some of the mechanisms that you just put in place. Um, so students is super quick kind of some features to be able to provide as a tutorial and I promise I'm going to take two minutes um, to keep going with questions but I think to Joseph's point is as an employer and as a recruiter is they're able to really um, sift through and tailor their search and looking for applicants just as you all as students are able to tailor your search for what types of companies, organizations, and positions you're able to look for. And so I'm gonna hop over to Handshake super quick. I promise it'll be quick. Just to recognize ways of which you can really um, build your confidence in updating your material, also keeping it consistent and as current as possible. And so um, we talked a little bit last week about LinkedIn and being able to have those positive um, and effective communication mechanisms. Handshake is another great way to be able to use that. Um, we would love it if every company organization nationwide would use Handshake. 
but you may not necessarily find every position initially that you're looking for, but through the filter system and as our corporate relations team is engaged by employers and interested companies with Auburn students, um, this is the first place that our team allows um, and really encourages employers to be able to post their positions. And so I would highly recommend this as a starting point because it does, you're able to find a lot in one place. Um, but as you can see on my screen, this is what students you'll see when you log in. Um, what I want to preface today and kind of during this time together is how to update your profile, but also to indicate what Joseph alluded to with your interest areas, what types of positions you're looking for, um, because as an employer and a company, they actually get to include what types of preferences. So whether it's GPA, um, major and year of study, um, and also a couple other credentials based on your interests that you can share. That way your information and kind of your needs can auto-populate with those same interests that employers are looking for. Um, so once you all are logged into Handshake, if you click on your little picture, um, my profile is going to be the first one where you can see um, kind of the information. And I, again, would encourage you to update this as regularly and as often as possible. Please don't use me as an example. This is on the student side, so my profile is incomplete. A great way to ensure that you have a completed profile, which does help you in marketing yourself as a future applicant, is to have at least one work experience, um, at least one student organization or extracurricular experience, and then at least one skill. Um, from there, that would indicate a complete profile, and so that's going to help you in addition to updating your application material, including resume, cover letters, any other information you'd like to include on Handshake, and making sure that this is also consistent for LinkedIn if you choose to use LinkedIn or any other job search platform. So again, ensuring that you're updating this as best you can. Um, you can add documents, and I would encourage you to make sure it's the most up-to-date resume, which no better time than ever, um, shameless plug, to get connected with our office. Um, we can set up a time to meet individually via Zoom to go through your resume, to go through your cover letter, um, to talk about Handshake and LinkedIn, how to make sure that it is current and relevant. Um, but to Joseph, Joseph's point and what him and his team can see are in your interest areas, and so you can can currently indicate what type of position or opportunity you're searching for. So some students on here today are searching for full-time positions. Others are curious about graduate school, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but you're able to indicate what are you currently exploring so that that can help you tailor your search. But Handshake has a mechanism in place to help cater your search as well. Also types of positions you're looking for, even cities, if you're geographically bound post-graduation or know of an area you'd be open to working in, that is also an opportunity that you can do. And last but not least, industries. And so this can be a really helpful tool to consider in practicing your handshake, your virtual handshake at this point, is making sure you have a complete profile and an up-to-date and consistent profile as well. And I will be quiet on that note, but we'll jump back in because um, I know you'd rather hear from Joseph at this point. Um, a follow-up question in relation to Handshake, but more so in your personal experience, Joseph, you alluded to deciding to go to graduate school after your undergraduate degree program. Um, talk to us about the benefits of pursuing a graduate degree and also um, the specific question from a student is how has your master's degree equipped you with the skills necessary to be successful in the field right so really 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 good question um and before we leave here uh to go to that question i know there was also a question about other um job search tools or whatever that i've used i do use linkedin i have a linkedin profile that i, I keep updated on a regular basis I also, internal to my company, we have something similar that's in, internal and I update it as well to make sure that it's got the latest and greatest information. So those are two tools for me, one inside my company and one on the outside that I like to make sure that I've got all of my information up to date, number one, because it, it helps if I wanted to do a job search, but also it helps with making connections because a lot of times I'm looking to make connections with people outside my company just because I want to share best practices or because I'm interested in what they do. So, you know, you'll, you'll realize in your career that you'll start to do some of that as well, that you'll want to connect with people outside of your, your base or your company just so that you can learn more or so that you can, you can give. So um, with that, for me, with uh, graduate school, um, as far as how it's equipped me, I, I like to tell people, I'll tell them all the time, my, my hardest day in graduate school, or my hardest, I'd say my hardest day at work doesn't compare to my hardest day while I was in graduate school. So what it prepared me for was it prepared me to solve really, really big, complex 
uh, ambiguous problems. So my, my thesis was, was on, uh, the title was the experimental characterization of solid rocket fuels, um, or characterization of particle dynamics in solid rocket fuels. And so what it was, was we were looking at how do we characterize at the burn surface of a, of a propellant, how do we characterize the particles that are leaving the surface? So what's the size of the particles? What's the shape of the particles, the composition of the particles? Because we were trying to understand why was there unburnt fuel leaving the combustion chamber of a rocket nozzle and going out. So if we could understand the problem, we could figure out how to make the rocket more efficient and uh, we could you know, get a boost. So a one or 2% gain in efficiency is worth millions and millions of dollars to, to a, a company or to the government. So it was a very important problem to try to solve. And so graduate school really helped me get the foundation in understanding what it means to solve a big real world problem. So when you're in your undergrad, right, your, your professor will start up on the board and they'll write this big giant equation. Like I can remember the first time that I saw the conservation of energy equation and it had all these integrals in it and had all this stuff and the professor started marking stuff off. So well, we don't need this because we'll assume it's, you know, adiabatic or we don't need this because we'll assume that this force doesn't exist. Well, in the real world, all that stuff exists. And so one of the things about the transition from undergrad to graduate school is you start to get more of an idea of those, those real world problems and those real world challenges. And you start to see where those assumptions that you made in a statics and dynamics class or in a, in a, you know, a lower level engineering class where those assumptions start to break down and where you have to look at everything. So graduate school really taught me how to dive deeper into a problem. It also taught me how to work on a problem that's going to last for months at a time. So it took me, uh, almost two years, well, a little over two years, I should say, to write my thesis. So I had to work from about the first, my first two months there at the school to the end of my time in graduate school, working on the exact same problem, trying to figure out how to solve it. So it really gave me those, those skills of being able to work on an ambiguous problem, to be able to dive into it, to know what it means to do my own research. So today, when I, I'm given a problem where maybe I don't understand a little bit about what's going on, I know how to go off and do some of that background research and, 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 and gather that information, even if it's a topic that I'm not necessarily familiar with. So graduate school really gave me that leg up on, on being a problem solver and was a really good complement to, to my undergrad because now I've got a little bit deeper knowledge of aerospace. And while I may not necessarily use the, the math or, or use the gas dynamics classes, those things do come up every now and again. Like when we were uh, here in, in, in recently in additive manufacturing, we, had a, we handle titanium metal, we handle steel, we handle cobalt chrome, we handle all these various types of metal, and we had an issue with the combustion of the metal. And so I was able to draw back on skills that I learned in graduate school, doing characterizations of rocket fuel and be able to provide a little bit of, a little bit of guidance and information to the team on the proper things that you should do when you're handling titanium, because we had to do it in, our, in the research lab. So I was able to relevantly pull a situation from when I was in school and apply it to a, a particular situation in the field, but overall, it's that, it's that problem solving, that being able to solve a deep, complex problem that may be ambiguous and not being afraid to be able to dive into a problem that's going to take months or, or even years. It's what I gained from, from going to grad school. I feel like I just learned a ton in you describing your graduate school experience. Uh, that is huge. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, Kind of transitioning a little bit, just as we near the end of our time today, we are not done yet, everybody, so please hang on tight. Um, some of the questions that have come in are in relation to kind of next steps. Um, so you sp spoke to previously as you're wrapping up your final year at Auburn um, with the crisis, if you will, um, the previous crisis that we've encountered is speaking to the ability to still search for internships and or the job search process. And so kind of fast forwarding to today for students that are graduating this semester, and I can't believe it, they have less than three weeks left of class um, with unfortunately graduation, um, the ceremony postponed to August at this point. Um, what would be some recommendations and also added motivation for students who are still going through the job search process potentially? Um, and what are some strategies that you might recommend, um, particularly for those that maybe had opportunities that they pursued and they have either had to redirect their search due to COVID-19 or in the process now of trying to find positions that are still active? Sure, sure. The, the one thing that I'll tell you is, is you know, number one, 
your your attitude is going to be really really important during this time so you know make sure that you're you're maintaining a positive attitude you know with with your job search because you're you're hearing maybe a lot of negative news we were talking about that before the call started about just the amount of negative news that you're that you're hearing out there um, so the first thing that you want to do is you're going through this time is you want to make sure that you're in a positive frame of mind for the work that you're about to do. So, you know, whether that's making sure that your connections with your family are strong or doing the things that you need to do from a mental health standpoint to make sure that, that your mind's in the right place that it needs to be. That's really where you need to be to start. You need to make sure that you're in, in the best possible condition because that's going to reflect in the work that you do to update your resume, that's going to reflect in you getting an on, on the phone interview versus what you typically do in person. So you got to make sure that you're, you know, game ready right now while, while you're in this, in this little lull. So um, another thing I'd say is that, you know, the one thing that we're going to need more than anybody when we come out of this is problem solvers. And so that's where being an engineer becomes so important because you can see that this, this particular moment has highlighted quite a few things um, in society that still need to be fixed. You know, how do you survive a, a global pandemic where people can't necessarily touch each other? So if you're working in any of the, the electrical engineering, the wireless engineering, the software engineering, or even some of the folks in mechanical engineering that may be interested in computers or machine and automation, this is going to be a great time for you to be entering the market because there's going to be a need for people on the other side of this that can go off and solve those problems so that if we're faced with a crisis like this down the road or something similar, we, we know how to handle it. Um, if you're working in chemical engineering or maybe even mechanical engineering and you're interested in the medical profession, there's quite a few jobs over there as they're starting to ramp up production. Same for industrial engineers. They're starting to ramp up production in their supply chain. Amazon is, is going crazy trying to figure out how they hire enough people to fill all the demand. So that's going to include engineers to, you know, software engineers to work on their, their infrastructure, as well as traditional you know, mechanical and electrical engineers and maybe some aerospace engineers and industrial engineers that are interested in supply chain and interested in how they operate. Um, Amazon bought a whole bunch of airplanes a while back because they were getting more into air logistics. So, you know, aerospace and mechanical engineers can go there as well. You know, for folks that are interested in the supply chain, all of these grocery stores are now trying to figure out how in the world do they keep up with the demand? And so how do they have their supply chain short? So rest assured, one of the great things about a crisis is that, you know, the, the engineers are some of the first people that are running toward it, trying to figure out how in the world do we solve the problem? How in the world do we prevent, you know, what happened today from happening again? So there's going to be plenty of need for you all as you graduate. So that's the one thing to look forward to. And that's one of the reasons to maintain a positive attitude. With that, you know, it might take a little bit longer than you were initially expecting to, to find the position that's right for you. And one of the great things I can say about that is even if you land the job that you think is your dream job in your, in your dream company, you're probably not going to stay in that job forever. You're probably going to move to another job. I've moved seven times since I started working for GE. I've lived, like I say, in New Jersey, just outside of New York City, in a small town in Kansas with 10,000 people out in Seattle. So you're going to change. Even with, within the same company, you're going to change roles multiple times. So this sort of feeling of, oh my God, I got to figure out which role is going to be the next one for me. I'm not sure where to search today. Um, you're going to have those sorts of pressures throughout your careers. And one of the things that this moment will do is this moment will prepare you because you'll know what to do when you get into that moment where you're trying to think about what the next job, job is going to be. So, you know, making sure you have that resume updated, making sure that you're doing the things right now that you can do to start to separate yourself from, from the pack. So attending sessions like this, reaching out to your contacts on LinkedIn, LinkedIn and understanding, hey, what are some of the skills that your company needs right now? You know, that's one thing everybody can do. If you met somebody at a career fair, maybe, you, you know, you didn't necessarily pursue the job, but you're thinking, hmm, maybe that industry is someplace I want to go right now. Reach out and get an understanding of what it is that they're, you know, that, that they're looking for. So, you know, maybe that means you graduate and you do a little bit of learning after graduation to, to prepare yourself. You know, maybe that means if you're going to go to graduate school now, maybe it's a sort of change in focus. Maybe your major doesn't change, but maybe the type of research that you do changes because you know in a couple of years you're going to be coming out of this working on one of the, the challenges or problems that we, we see, you know, during, during the pandemic. So I'd say the best thing you can do is make sure that you're remaining positive, make sure that you're doing your best to, to take care of yourself right now and get yourself ready and understand that it's a really, really long journey. So, um, you know, our, our grandparents uh, and, and, and those before may have worked 20 or 30 years. Sometimes I see projections that say that when we get to retirement age, say 60, there could be people that are living well into their hundreds. 
So you're going to have a really, really long working career. And, and when you look back on it in hindsight, this is a very small portion of, of that working career. And this thing's going to pass before you know it. And we're going to be on to, to what comes next. So you want to make sure that you're using this time to make yourself better and understand that there is another side to, to what's going on right now. And when we get there, problem solvers are going to be exactly what it is that we need to, to move us forward. So you're, you're in the perfect major, you're getting the perfect education, being at Auburn University to kind of prepare you to go out there and, and take those next steps. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. And um, for students, specifically those that did chat about still looking for positions, also potentially maybe positions were available and aren't currently available. I think a really big question that comes and that I see on a daily basis now meeting with students for career development is, so how do I actually know what companies are still hiring positions? And, and Joseph, you did a fantastic job of highlighting just the different industries now more than ever that, that are still hiring and that are still having an opportunity to give back and be those problem solvers and be those critical thinkers to give back to the communities and give back to society. And so maybe it is tweaking some of our interest areas or being more willing to kind of open and cast that net a little bit wider of different opportunities that might present themselves to continue on kind of, I love what you said, on the other side of what we're experiencing now. So I think that's fantastic. Um, I did wanna show one other resource, um, a common question that I get from students. And Joseph, you might um, have this question asked in a variety of ways, maybe once we get you back here in the fall semester and um, things rolling for recruitment and for future positions with GE Aviation, is the opportunity or the common question of, okay, so who's still hiring and what are they looking for? And so um, I wanted to show one other quick resource housed in the handshake for students. Um, I consider this a hidden gem. It's actually one of my personal favorites to use with students, but what they've just added, it's called Career Shift. What they've just added is a, a live kind of feed of companies and organizations and where they're at in their hiring process. Um, and so let me just hop over real quick and share this um, and then be able to kind of wrap up our conversation um, for today. So students, again, back in Handshake, um, you will actually go where you schedule appointments. And so this again is kind of a good correlation as we wrap up this afternoon session is if you still have questions, um, and I hope you do, this was fantastic, but maybe you have some follow-up questions based on what Joseph mentioned today. Um, we can always get back together. If you have additional questions, I might encourage you as we wrap up today, go ahead and put them in the chat function. I will happily reach out to Joseph and kind of touch base with him to see other insight that you can provide. Um, and I equally want to invite him back every week if we can just to get that opportunity so I can't say thank you enough for being here today Joseph um, but for students that are still having those questions we can still meet um, I am still available to meet individually with students um, and so through handshake is the best way to get connected so you can schedule an appointment um, as you guys are seeing here under the Career Center tab um, the first tab that pops up is the appointment mechanism and that's something, again, that you and I can get together. But that second tab under resources can be a helpful tool to utilize in addition to Handshake, in addition to LinkedIn, as Joseph mentioned, Glassdoor is also a really helpful resource for students to not only search for positions available, but also from the salary standpoint. So in, in terms of once you get to a point with an offer, how to negotiate salary, there is some great salary information there. Um, but what I want to peek at real quickly is that career shift option. Um, so career shift is housed in Handshake, so it remains completely free for students. Um, the exciting part, students, it's for those especially graduating this semester, um, you will not get rid of me that fast. So we actually serve students up to five years post-graduation. So our alumni base is an opportunity. Um, I would love for, and I'll be able to share this afterwards, Joseph is part of our young alumni council. And so being able to still have touch points with the university, when the College of Engineering, um, but we also want to make sure to still provide resources to our students even post-graduation. So career shift here is an option. Um, I thought it was logged in, fingers crossed. Nope, 
Oh, bud. Um, so you guys, um, students, you'll be able to use your Auburn credentials. Um, and that again, allows this to remain completely free for you, but that's why it's also housed um, in Handshake. I'm not gonna go through it too in depth, but oh, perfect timing, that pop up. I promise I didn't plan that. Um, this again is a brand new resource just added. Um, and so within CareerShift, you can use it as a job search, so, blah, 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 job search platform, you can also search specific contacts um, and also companies and organizations that might be of interest to you based on what you're looking to do post-graduation. Um, but again, as I exit out of here, it's going to be right here under COVID-19 impact hiring. Um, and so impacted hiring and you can click on view companies and it is an active list to give you the company or organization's name and then added information as to are they still hiring? Is there hiring freeze? Are there unfortunate layoffs happening? And then what types of positions they might still be looking for? Um, so if this is an added bonus for you students who are currently searching for opportunities, even as early as in a few short weeks this summer, uh, this might be a mechanism to help. Um, but then in addition, let's you and I connect after today. Um, and so as we wrap up today, we have um, one more session next week for our Friday feature series. Um, so the third part, same time um, next week, there is information on Handshake to be able to register. We will be talking about um, quality over quantity. So the application process and how to really tailor your documentation. And so Joseph hit the nail on the head today. No time better than now to be able to update your material and really look at your resume and find ways to infuse what you all have done seamlessly. Transitioning to remote learning, all of your coursework and being able to transition in a time that is so unknown and such uncharted territory for a lot of people. Um, but knowing that you're not alone as students being completely remote, a lot of industries, a lot of full-time professionals are also doing the same thing. And so utilizing your networks, developing and even engaging in those networks can be a great next step for each of you. Um, so I am going to wrap this up for today, but students, if you have any last questions, please go ahead and pop them in the chat function and I will be able to follow up. Um, I'm also going to follow up with everyone after today's session with a recording so you can play back all the fantastic um, information that Joseph provided to us, but also to rehear some of the questions. Um, I will also make sure to include in there the resources that we peeked at today in Handshake and also CareerShift and also my personal contact information. And so I have the privilege and the honor to get to work in the College of Engineering and to serve all of our engineering students. And I wanna be able to help and support you in finding strategies and ways to be effective in your internship and job search process. Um, and we can also track graduate school. So if that has been an interest, maybe a current interest, maybe you hadn't thought about it before, that is a great opportunity that we can connect and then also get you connected with our graduate outreach um, opportunities as well. So um, I know that was a lot at once, but thank you all so, so much for being here today. Thank you, Joseph. Um, we so appreciate you. Um, and I, again, can't wait to see you back in the fall semester, hopefully rocking and rolling um, with career fair in the fall. And I know April and Hillary and Jerry feel the same way. Um, but thank you guys so much again. Um, and War Eagle. Or Eagle, thanks for having me. Thank you all. Thanks, Joseph.